municipal governments oversee a ton of essential services, but they do that amidst a complicated relationship with the province. And the re-elected provincial government has already made a big move on the municipal file with a so-called strong mayor pledge. As part of our ongoing partnership with the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, during the 2022 annual conference, let's find out how those local partners are feeling about intergovernmental relations these days. With us now from furthest from our studio to closest, in Kitchener, Ontario, Karen Redman, Regional Chair of the Region of Waterloo. In Milton, Ontario, Colin Best, Regional Councillor for Milton and President-elect of the Association of Municipalities of Ontario. And on the shores of Lake Simcoe, Lynn Dolan, Mayor of Innisfil. Hi, everybody. Hi, Nam. I, I know there's a lot of excitement in the air. AMO is finally in person, and I hope everyone is enjoying themselves. Uh, Mayor Dolan, I wanted to start with you first. Um, how would you characterize the relationship between the province and the municipalities during the pandemic? I think that uh, during the pandemic, if anything, the collaboration between the levels of government has improved, and that's all levels of government. And that's exactly what our residents and our taxpayers expect from us, to work together. And during the pandemic, that did happen. I think a lot of the reason behind that is because of an agreement that we've had for some 20 years with the province and the Association of Municipalities of Ontario through a memorandum of understanding to work together and collaborate on any new issues that come forward. And Karen, how would you characterize that relationship? So I would tell you that it has been incredibly collaborative and that we were solving problems in real time because of the pandemic. And I, I think of when uh, Waterloo Region wasn't getting what we thought was our fair share of vaccines and we went to the Premier, we went to the Minister of Health and they responded. But that kind of responsiveness needs to continue uh, because clearly we have huge challenges ahead of us, whether it's homelessness, health care, the shadow pandemic of uh, mental health. So one of the messages that AMO continues to carry forward, and, and we see it in spades so now that we're here sort of in the same room, is we have 444 municipalities and one size doesn't fit all. So I think all of those roles We've proven and demonstrated, as Lynn said, that we are reliable partners that can help form government policy as we go forward. Because acting quickly and being informed by consultation are not mutually exclusive. And Colin, um, Karen brought up so many great points. There are 444 different municipalities in this province, many different needs in different regions. How would you characterize the relationship the municipalities have with the province? Uh, right now, it's uh, very collaborative, as uh, we mentioned earlier, that uh, the province did take the initiative to assist uh, municipalities, especially through uh, funding uh, during uh, COVID. But we also have a number of uh, challenges, and that's what we look forward to at this uh, conference, is working together. We have a number of uh, delegations, as well as the ministerial forum, to discuss some of these issues, because we have you know municipalities from anywhere from 500 people to over a million. So we have to uh, work out what's the best solution for everyone. And uh, Karen, I want to flip that question on the head a little bit uh, because you mentioned how the province responded to Waterloo uh, region's needs. Um, how would you characterize uh, municipalities themselves? Do they work well together? Yeah, I can think of, of several initiatives and it's really important to point out that while the pandemic seemed to take up everybody's attention, so our staff in Waterloo region and right across the, the regional governments and single tier governments uh, that I represent as chair of a, a group called Marco, we're continuing to look at investment in infrastructure. I think locally of two-way all day go and how we've made strides in that, working with Metrolinx on a huge transit hub, second phase of our LRT. So all of those things demand the kind of cooperation and collaboration, not just with senior levels of government, but you know, I think of two-way all day go and it impacts wealth right through to the GTA. So those intergovernment cooperations happen at the local level as well as with senior levels of government as well. And Mayor Dolan, I want to ask you the same question. Yeah, so I think it's it's really important that the that the province responds to all of us. And as as you mentioned, one size doesn't fit all. So it's really important that they see the perspective of Northern Ontario, rural Ontario, 
of large urban and small urban uh, right across the board, even the differences between single tier and, and multi-tier um, municipalities. So you need a strong prop, you need a strong communities to have a strong province. That's important. Uh, one level of government can't do it alone. And we do, as Karen said, have uh, so many issues moving forward, uh, even post pandemic with attainable and affordable housing and health care. And we need to be collaborative and work together with the province to make our quality of life even better than it is today. And Colin, I should have said uh, congratulations because you are the president-elect of um, Association of Municipalities of Ontario. So that must be very exciting. Um, I'm wondering if you can give us some examples of the province involving municipalities in the decision-making process. Well, a lot of it, as uh, Lynn and uh, Karen mentioned, is the MOU discussions where we basically work you know, in collaborative with not only ministers, but also senior staff in terms of what our needs are is the old saying go oh, you may not always get what you want but you you need to get what you need because it uh, is a real situation when municipalities of all sizes need you know provincial cooperation we deliver provincial services but we also need provincial funding to deliver them um, provincial funding is needed throughout the province because housing is something that's been on the minds of a lot of people. We've been talking about this affordability crisis. Um, I'm wondering if you could give me um, um, some insights. Um, how would you characterize Minister Steve Clark's handling of the municipal affairs and housing portfolio? Karen, I'll start with you. I think one of the advantages that Steve has is uh, a huge amount of goodwill and credibility because he has been a mayor. He is a former president of AMO, and he's also served as a CAO. So he understands the sort of 360 degree challenge that municipalities are facing. And there is no doubt, like other than healthcare and education, we pretty much provide all of the resources, all of the services that residents depend on for quality of life. So I would say that Minister Clark is very good about bringing things to the MOU, consulting with us. I, I think of their housing affordability task force, and we ask for more consultation. And we will continue because we help to alleviate unintended consequences or maybe consequences that they haven't thought about. And I've seen legislation, as my colleagues have on this call, change after the input uh, by municipalities through email. And uh, Mayor Dolan, Karen mentioned those unintended consequences. Um, I think what we've seen happening in this province is that people not being able to afford living in the GTA have moved to other parts in the province and the unintended consequences, making housing more expensive in those regions and making housing less accessible for the people that live there. How would you characterize uh, the minister's handling of this file? So I think um, it's it's something that all levels of government need to work on. And I know that the province would tell you they also need the federal government to be cooperative on this file as well. Um, one of the things that we've worked really hard on through AMO and through collaboration with the province is universal broadband and expanding broadband all over Ontario. Never before the pandemic did, uh, did it become so apparent how important connectivity was in order to keep our economy going and keep our governments going. And that's a really important piece of it. And you'll hear this more at the conference. He's very seized with the housing file and uh, wants, has the, the goal of uh, 1.5 million uh, new homes by 20, in 10 years. So I think that, um, I think, again, um, help us help you. We need to work together with the province to, to make housing more affordable and attainable. And we, we can't do it alone. No level of government can do it alone. And Colin, the province promised um, billions of dollars to the municipalities to deal with the pandemic through the Safe Restart Agreement. Um, how much say did the municipalities have in how that money got spent? Actually, it was delivered quite well. We worked very closely, both at a you know, uh, political and staff level, and a lot of uh, you know. And for many communities, it made the difference you know, to, for survival. And this is something that we look to continue to uh, have that uh, cooperation, but also to understand what our needs are. Karen, well, how would you characterize that? So we we made a full court press saying that we needed the pandemic funding to continue, but um, the safe restart funding gave municipalities the ability to apply the funds where they needed to. There's always strings attached, I realized, to funding, 
But you know, for several years now, the region of Waterloo has been one of the fastest growing communities in Canada. And we saw outward migration during the pandemic when people were at home and thought they could maybe uh, have a different uh, working space for lack of a better word, if they were working from home. You know, by 2050, we will have almost a million residents and we're looking at approving another 120,000 housing units as part of our official plan. And I raise all of this because I think local planning and local decision making is appropriately informed by local government because we're closest to the people. And it's vital that we have a say in where the planning goes, but it also requires provincial investment uh, for affordable housing, as well as investing in healthcare and schools. So there is no end to the cooperation that's available and the collaboration that I feel is needed so that people can live in communities that are complete, that are completed and have 15 minute communities. You know, many of us as our municipalities have done undertakings for reducing greenhouse gas emissions and we have thresholds that we are trying to adhere to. So balancing all of these needs is something that's very much in focus of regional municipalities and local um, municipalities. Uh, moving forward, uh, we just had an election, so the Tories have now have a new mandate um, to see what's going to happen moving forward through the pandemic. Um, Doug Ford ran on growth and promised to build things like highways, roads, etc. Colin, what role should municipalities play in that? Well, as we mentioned earlier, it's a collaboration as we've uh, had uh, a situation where you know we may not agree on everything. It's a question of uh, working through what our needs are and what the provincial needs are and working a balance between them because there is a lot of challenges as Karen mentioned in Waterloo. I have the same issue in uh, Halton. We're looking at growing from 600,000 to a million people in the next uh, 30 years. And we need not only you know, assistance from municipalities but also the transit, the hospitals and the uh, schools. Uh, Mayor Dahl and Karen uh, mentioned the municipalities are the closest to the people. Do Doug Ford's plans clash with what municipalities are already doing? I, I don't think so. I guess it would depend on on where in the or where in the province you are, but we're certainly striving to make growth smart and do it well in Simcoe County and the town of Innisfil. We are also in a very fast growing part of uh, of the province and infrastructure and keeping ahead of it and master plans and making sure it's planned appropriately and it's smart growth. Those are all very important pieces. And I think it's something that, uh, you know, we'll be having, uh, all of us will be having delegations with ministers uh, at the conference and, and talking about what works in our municipality, because it, we are the, where the rubber hits the road. Uh, we know our communities best. We meet our residents every day in the grocery store and the post office, and we need to make sure their voices are heard. Um, this panel has been going so swimmingly well. Everyone is getting along great, and we love to see that. But, you know, I am wondering, um, there are 444 municipalities, as we mentioned, in this province, and they need, um, different communities need different things, like uh, the needs of a community in northern Ontario may differ from southwestern Ontario. Colin, I'm going to put you on the hot seat. Um, to what extent does this government understand that? I think it, uh, it does quite well. I, I just recently attended the uh, Nova conference in Fort Francis uh, a few months ago. And that's one thing that the members there realize that uh, the province has been helping them, but we need, you know, other uh, help with challenges, especially with such things as uh, health and mental services in Northern Ontario, the uh, homeless and addiction rate is almost three times what it is in the uh, Southern Ontario. So we need to you know, put those resources to work there. And the province is I listening. Call, I want to interrupt you there but i think what you just said might surprise a lot of people because i think a lot of people um homelessness people who are unhoused it's very visible in southwestern ontario but you're saying it's actually the problem is actually wor worse worse yeah. in the north yeah as you've interviewed some of the mayors from uh, northern ontario there is some real challenges there and you know in situations where they don't have the hospital and the health uh, care system there to back up you know, the municipalities, their health units are severely challenged. I chair the health task force and a lot of our biggest issues are in the other pandemic, which is the opioids, mental health and other homeless issues that the province really needs to concentrate some efforts on. Okay, so maybe that's a place that they could do better? 
Yeah, I, I expect so. And we're looking forward to, to hearing more from ministers. And we have a ministerial forum on uh, Tuesday. And I'm looking forward to some answers from ministers. And Karen, you mentioned earlier that municipalities are the closest to the people. Um, you are on the deliver delivery end of providing services. Do you ever feel as though maybe you don't get the respect that you deserve? So I, I was just going to, if I can just tag on to, to Colin's uh, of course. point too, and, and just say, you know, municipalities aren't the problem, whether it comes to housing or homelessness. We want to be part of the solution. And we understand outcomes, as, as Lynn said, you know, we meet our constituents at the grocery store. And, and I know MPPs do, but um, we're closest to the people and, and we're there all the time. People that I meet, whether it's the grocery store, they come into my office, they email me. They want to live in a community where they can depend on the water being delivered, where their sewage has been processed. They want a, a livable, affordable uh, community that, that um, has a future. And, and I would have to say, um, those are the things they care, care about. It's a safe drinking water. It's a place to call home. And those are things that municipalities deliver. So I, I guess my message to the uh, our provincial counterparts would be, uh, we're from the municipality and we're here to help. I see us very much as being part of any kind of focused outcome-based solution. And, you know, whether it's homelessness, mental health, um, we need to break down the silos of government. So it's, it's great that we have a great relationship with the MOU. It's really important that ministers, including the prime minister, or the uh, premier, sorry, the prime minister too, for that matter, but that's a different venue, uh, come and talk to us because um, we can help with those out outcomes. Um, municipalities are asked to do a lot and they're key mm -hmm. to helping the province and the federal government in meeting their stated goals. I'm wondering if I could do something a little different because um, I'm hearing from all of you, you have um, a lot of passion for the work that you do. But I also wonder that maybe people are not as engaged to what municipalities are doing. There's a lack of, um, you know, there's a lack of emotion to it. I We probably get annoyed if our garbage isn't picked up. So I just wanted to just do a quick thing from all of you, just maybe like 30 seconds to give us an idea. Why do you do the work that you do? We're going into um, a municipal election. We're hearing councillors are not running again. It's a lot of work. Um, you know, social media is not very kind to all of you. Um, people are choosing not to run. So I just want to get an idea of um, why is it that you do the work you do? Um, Colin, I'll start with you. Yeah, well, it's I, I come from a family tradition of working in the community. I volunteer in a number of areas. And we have a lot of great uh, dedicated, not only politicians, but also staff. It's a question of making you know, your municipality better. And as uh, Fred Dean, one of our uh, instructors, has, has said to a number of uh, councillors, is the municipalities deliver over 80 different functions. It's you know anything from your water to your electricity to various other uh, aspects that uh, if you want to have a community, you need municipal government, and it's a great calling. We have uh, some very dedicated staff, that, and we're looking for more. Municipalities are facing the same demographic uh, challenges that other skilled trades are. We're having a lot of senior people retire, and we need new people. And Mayor Dolan? So for me, it's just about uh, being able to have a job that makes a difference in people's lives every day. As Karen said, we, we deliver a lot of services and most of them people take for granted until they don't work, until you turn on the this switch and the light doesn't come on or your garbage doesn't get picked up or your road doesn't get plowed. So those are the services that people expect. And you're also correct that people don't really realize who does what. I know when my MPP was out campaigning, uh, she was getting questions that she had to text to me because they were municipal responsibilities. And I will quite often get asked about, about school boards and hospitals. So people really just want all of us to work together and find solutions uh, for, for whatever it is that is top of mind for them that day. But just being able to put my head on the pillow every night and say, you know what, I made a difference to that person today and they're happier because of my job. And Karen? I love this question and I have to say that when I was knocking on doors uh, for, to run as chair of the region of Waterloo in 2018, I have served at other levels of government and one of the supporters that I ran into said to me, you know, I really wish you were running for a big job. And I looked at him and I smiled and I said, I kind of think this is a big job. 
And um, what I really embrace is the fact that the decisions that we make practically impact the people we represent the next day or in a very short period of time, and it impacts our family, our neighborhood, our friends, what that neighborhood looks like, the businesses, and the future that we're going to leave our children. And, and I look forward to the investments in the planning that um, municipal governments do. And I would tell you that I wake up every morning excited to come to a job that's complex, that's challenging, but that I know um, will make a real difference uh, to the people that I care about. Thank you all for that. I just wanted to put it in context, I think, for us to better understand how hard the jobs that you do are. Um, you know, something that is changing with your file, the government is introducing legislation giving the mayors of Ottawa and Toronto more powers, including a veto over bylaws that, conf uh, that conflict with provincial priorities, such as building houses. Um, what do you think of this? Um, Mayor, Mayor Dollett, I have to come to you first because you know, uh, the powers are being uh, given to Toronto and Ottawa. Right. So um, I think AMO is still looking at the proposal and, and delving into the details as the devil's in the details of any legislation. Um, but from my personal perspective, coming from a municipality of less than 50,000 people um, and, and thinking over the last four years as mayor, I can think of I'm lucky enough to have a very collaborative and, and council that looks for consensus. And I can't think of one time that I would require the strong mayor power. Is there, and again, I, I'm not trying to put you on the hot seat. I'm just wondering, because two cities were chosen and um, you're a smaller place. Is there any like a wince, like kind of um, as if you've been overlooked or why those two cities and what does that mean for um, the people that I represent? I think maybe some of the larger municipalities like Mississauga might think such a thing. Um, but certainly Toronto's always been treated differently with the City of Toronto Act versus the Municipal Act. Um, and and different, different municipalities have different needs. And we were told the reason for the um, starting in uh, Toronto and Ottawa is because one third of that growth I talked about earlier is expected to happen in those two jurisdictions. And Colin, what are your thoughts on this? Well, as uh, Lynn mentioned, AMO has not made a position. Uh, we want to have some dialogue with our members and we're looking forward to having that dialogue with all the members uh, present and the public. Uh, what do you want in your community? Because it has some you know, significant changes in the future, not only for Ottawa and Toronto, but for the future makeup of our municipalities. And we need that dialogue before we could have a reasoned uh, response to the province. And Karen? So I've already mentioned that I'm a chair of an organization that represents large single tier municipalities of which um, Toronto and Ottawa are members as well as uh, two tier systems. So. My question is, I don't know how that would apply or impact us. When I first heard of it, I have to say, I kind of went, wow, I didn't see this one coming. So I'm actually very happy, although uh, Waterloo Region would be very high up on that fastest growing community and possibly a place where they would consider this, I'm okay to let Toronto and Ottawa go first because I do believe there needs to be more consultation. And you know, during this pandemic, we've all sort of witnessed in some in families of um, the great migration or resignation. So I really hope that the consultation isn't just with municipalities, but also with the professional organizations. Um, I think Colin already mentioned that there is a real race for uh, planners, uh, CAOs and uh, top notch administrators. There's a lot of competition for them. So I would hope that they're going to consult with those organizations to find out again are there unintended consequences or places that they would like to refine this? So I, I'm very much in a wait and see mode. And as Lynn said, the devil will be in the details. And, and Mayor Dolan, I'll, I'll ask you this because um, I was so excited when I heard what um, Innisfil was doing um, when you partnered up with Uber because public transit is something that we're all kind of trying to figure out in this province. And, and you received international attention. Um, are extra powers necessary for municipalities to get things done when you have already proven uh, of the innovation that's in your municipality? 
I think that uh, it depends on the council that is elected and how they get along and the leadership and 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 the amount of collaboration. We our council has always taken a team approach, and we don't always agree. We debate passionately at the table, but when the vote is taken, it's taken, and we leave it at the table. And uh, we don't. There's, you know, one of the nice things about local government is you don't have to vote along party lines. You vote your conscience all the time. And, and that can make sense for some really interesting debates. But yeah, we've had some wonderful with, with Uber, with the new Orbit, our transit oriented uh, plant. We've, we've done some great things and we've done it based on a strategic plan that we all get behind and a community first approach. We've got about 90 seconds. These conversations always go by so quickly. I know it's the first uh, AMO in person in a very long time. And I was wondering if you could share your thoughts of what it means to finally be able to meet uh, with your colleagues in person and be able to collaborate on these ideas uh, to move us forward uh, as we go through this year. Colin, I'll start with you. So thanks for that uh, point, because you know, for three years, we haven't had a chance to get together. It's not only just the sessions and the delegations, but it's also our trade show and also working out uh, you know, a lot of the side discussions. We have a lot of uh, social aspects uh, to the conference and, and also getting to know and, and also to uh, thank all the uh, councillors and mayors and reeves and wardens that aren't returning. We've had a, quite a turnover this year, and uh, we're looking forward to working with uh, a, a new council next year. But it, the big thing is, is that we need that dialogue between all members, staff, and uh, you know, uh, exhibitors. And Karen? So I, I just want to give a shout out to AMO staff because I think our virtual um, uh, conferences were amazing. I think it was a very high bar. But what's most important are those conversations over coffee, uh, the hallway co corridor conversations, and sharing of ideas. So I think that's the piece of it that I'm very excited about. And as Colin has pointed out, it's great to see some colleagues who we know will not be joining us after the next municipal election. So I think it's that person to person contact that I think is really important. So, uh, and we have a very good contingent this year. Meeting with the ministers is great. Hearing what the premier has to say is great, but it, it's wonderful to share ideas with colleagues. And Mayor Dolan. Thank you, yes. I also agree that whatever problem your municipality is going through now, there is someone who's been through it before. And you can talk to them and you can always share with people who you know are gonna be following you. So it doesn't matter where in the province you are, it's, it's just so nice to, to see because the way that AMO set up, we, we make sure we're represented from all different shapes and size of municipalities. We also have a youth fellowship program and I've been a mentor for the last couple of years and I'm really excited to meet my mentee in person. And uh, we've got uh, maybe uh, 30 seconds left, but Colin, you know, we were talking about the strong mayors. Um, when that proposal came out, it seemed to surprise a lot of people because this, this wasn't something uh, that the um, the PCs ran on. Um, does a move like this go against the spirit of collaboration uh, with the government uh, sh that the government showed during the pandemic? As we mentioned, it's a partnership. You know, they have uh, initiatives that uh, we're not totally aware of. And also, just to let you know, municipalities didn't ask for us. And we do not have a position on strong mayors as an association. We're looking forward to the new board and discussing these issues. But it's something that, you know, the, the province has their agenda. We have ours. Well, big thanks to all of you for taking time out of your busy schedule. I hope that you have a great time at AMO uh, and looking forward to seeing all the great ideas that will come out of the conference. Uh, thank you so much for spending some time with us. We really do appreciate your insights. Great to be with you. Yeah, take care. The Agenda in the Summer with Nam Kiwanuka is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.